Neon signs have a charming aesthetic that can bring visual interest to a variety of situations, from announcing a sale or an opening, to giving some text or visual elements an extra bit of playful emphasis. In this video, we'll check out a couple of different ways to create a realistic neon light text effect, from long form ways to do it from scratch, to easy to use shortcuts to get you the results you want in a couple of clicks. Hi, this is Daisy Ein for Envato Tuts Plus. I love neon signs. I've been pining for one for my birthday. But through the magic of software, we can take any phrase we'd like and transform it into a stylish, fun neon sign. Let's take a look at a couple of ways we could do that. First, if you're short on time or you're just not too keen on the nuts and bolts, you could use a pre-made text effect to jumpstart your creative process. This one here is from Envato Elements. Templates like this use smart objects to make editing a breeze. You'll see here we have a bunch of options. I'm going to use the green sample here, so I'll turn visibility off on the other folders. Let's just scale this sample up with the Move tool. Now, when I open this folder, notice that the layers themselves have a little icon in the right-hand corner. This visually indicates that they're smart objects. Double-click to go inside them. Now, we're inside the smart object, and we can make our edits. I'm going to type some new text here using the free font Grand Hotel. Once I'm happy with my edits, all I have to do is save and then return to the original document. And there you have it. The text effects have been applied. Easy, right? Well, there's actually even easier ways to experiment with a neon light look and feel, but we'll get to that later in the video. Let's say, on the flip side, that you're a fan of creating effects from scratch. Let's take a look at how we could do that, too. This walkthrough is inspired by a tutorial written by Rose on Envato Tuts Plus. Check out the link in the description to read through this tutorial yourself. I've already created a background here for my neon sign. Let's just jump right into creating the text itself. Start off by creating some type with the text tool. I use the font Beyond Medium. Then, rasterize the type in your Layers panel. Right-click the layer and select Rasterize Layer. Let's cut out the horizontal part of our letters here. Make your selection, and then paste in place to ensure it's pasted exactly where we cut it. I like to name my layers so I can keep track of my work. I named one layer here horizontal for the horizontal lines we cut out, and vertical for the other parts. Change the fill values for both layers to zero. Then, let's duplicate these layers so we have two copies, three layers total for each. It's a good idea to keep them organized in folders. To create a folder, come down here to your Layers panel, click to create a folder, and then we can click and drag to add layers to these folders. Place the horizontal folder under the vertical folder. Now that we're all set up, let's add some layer styles. Let's start with the first horizontal layer. Remember, you can open and close, expand and contract these folders by clicking right here. You can add a layer style down here in the Layers panel. So you'll see I've selected my first horizontal layer, and now let's add a layer style. First, let's add a bevel and emboss. We want to add size 10, uncheck the Use Global Light box, angle 0, altitude 70, check the anti-aliased box, highlight mode, linear light, Shadow Mode, Opacity, 0%. Then, we need to adjust the contour. Check Anti-Aliased. Let's add an inner shadow with these settings. Blend Mode Screen. Color, a purple shade with this hex code, E6558D4. Angle 30. Distance, 0. Now, let's also add an inner glow with these settings. Opacity, 85%. Color, a purple shade with this hex code, FE66F1. Source set to center, and size 18. We're not done yet. Let's add a drop shadow too with these settings. Distance, 13. And size 7. So check out where we are so far. Pretty neat, right? Let's add some effects to the second horizontal layer, too. 
The process here is similar and should feel familiar. We're adding bevel and emboss again, but with some different values. Size 16. Uncheck the Use Global Light box. Angle, minus 36. Altitude, 42. Contour, Cove Deep. Check the Anti-Aliased box. Highlight Mode, Vivid Light. Shadow Mode, Opacity 0. Let's adjust the contour again, like we did before. The contour itself should be cone inverted, and we need to check anti-aliasing. Now check out what we've got. It's looking a lot glossier. However, we have one more horizontal layer to style, so let's dig in. We're back at bevel and emboss with some different settings. Size 16, uncheck use global light, angle 18, altitude 58, contour, Half round. Check the anti aliased box. The highlight mode should be vivid light. And the shadow mode should have an opacity of zero. You guessed it, we're going to alter the contour. The contour itself should be sawtooth 2. And check the anti aliased box here. Now let's add an inner glow with the following settings blend mode, linear light, noise at 5%. Color, a light pink set to the hex code FF, DC, FA. Source, set to center. Size, set to 38. And finally, let's add an outer glow with these settings. Color set to a dark purple and the hex code 7F2, D65, and size to 15. And here's our result. Pretty neat, isn't it? Thankfully, applying these styles to our other layers is simple. All we have to do is copy our layer styles and paste them. However, make sure to do so in the right order. So for example, the styles on the first horizontal layer are going to apply to the first vertical one. But we do need to make a few adjustments here. To open up and edit your layer styles, just double click on the style in your layers panel. Let's alter the bevel and embosses angle to 90 and altitude to 74 since we're working with verticals and not horizontals now. Looking at the inner glow, change the size to 15. We're getting there. Let's repeat this process for the other two vertical layers and make some changes. So let's copy the second horizontal layer's effects and paste them here on the second vertical layer. Double click on the effects and let's make some edits. Again, the bevel and emboss needs to be adjusted. Angle minus 76 and altitude 53 this time. That's it. An easy change, right? Just one more to apply and edit. Copy the layer style from the last horizontal layer and paste it here on our final vertical layer. Let's make an edit. Change the bevel and emboss settings to angle minus 82 and altitude 53. And there you have it. Our text has a really cool neon light effect. Let's push this a little further by adding some background light. Create a new layer under your text. Set its blending mode to linear light. Select a dark purple color. I used this purple with the hex code 98338B. Then, using a large soft brush, apply some color to the background. Now the background is impacted by the light from our neon sign. We could, of course, continue to push this even further. For example, check out Rose's tutorial. She even walks you through creating a realistic chord that really pushes this aesthetic further and gives it such a realistic look and feel. Personally, I love digging in and experimenting with the nuts and bolts of how something works just like this. However, sometimes I'm short on time, like really short on time. So let's take a look at another cool way we can experiment with neon type. Placeit is an awesome online tool where you can create all kinds of mockups and comps right in your browser, no software or experience necessary. Whether you're an experienced designer or a complete beginner, it's fun and super easy to use. Check it out! There's plenty of neon here to see. All I have to do is choose one. I can add text, change the font, and the color. I can even easily add stock imagery right here from my browser. And once I'm happy with my composition, it's as easy as clicking download. You're looking at a one-time fee or a subscription that allows you to design mockups to your heart's content. Thank you for joining me on this survey of a couple of different ways we can experiment with neon light inspired type. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel.
Good luck and happy designing.